Forests are indispensable to life on Earth. They capture and absorb harmful CO2 emissions and release in their place vital oxygen. Forests cover 38% of the European Union's territory, stretching for 160 million hectares. Europe's forests are the lungs of our continent. And contrary to what one might expect, they're expanding year after year. We're just a stone's throw away from Brussels at the Arboretum of Tervuren. This royal estate of 120 hectares has been planted with many exotic trees, like this sequoia. Full name, Sequoia Dendrum Gigantea, from California in the USA. The European Union doesn't have a common forestry policy. Member states are in charge of managing their own forests. However, the EU does have a role to play in matters such as environmental protection. On the 28th of April 2015, the European Parliament adopted a new strategy on forests and forestry. Coordination of EU countries through the exchange of best practice, better protection of forests and support for young forest owners feature on the list of MEPs' demands to European leaders. We're now in the Sonion Forest beside the Arboretum. This is a small part of the EU's Natura 2000 programme to protect Europe's natural habitats and biodiversity. Natura 2000 is a set of 26,000 protected sites in Europe. Through this network, the EU obliges member states to protect threatened habitats, animals and plant species without entirely ruling out economic activities, provided they're compatible with the conservation of flora and fauna. 100 kilometers to the south, here too the EU is active, but this is a working forest and the challenge is to combine its protection with the exploitation of its natural resources. The common agricultural policy is a source of funding for forests, during the period 2007 to 2013, the EU's investments totaled 5.4 billion euros. The development of the forestry sector is a priority. The EU invests in the marketing of forestry products, in forestry techniques and in the creation of woodlands, but also in the prevention of forest fires and in repairing the damage caused by them. The European Parliament recognises that the forestry sector employs three million people in Europe. To ensure that those jobs continue, it's necessary for some sort of pooling through, for example, instruments like the European Agricultural Fund for Rural Development. Good quality wood is essential in the construction of environmentally friendly houses. This is a growth market for the wood industry. François, expliquez-moi, s'il vous plaît, comment est l'état de votre industrie et pourquoi L'industrie du bois en Wallonie est composée d'environ 18 500 emplois. Euh, ça fait 13 000 salariés et environ 5 500 indépendants. On peut compter un chiffre d'affaires annuel de 4 milliards et demi. Et on peut estimer la surface forestière en Wallonie à environ 550 000 hectares. Un des principaux débouchés pour le secteur bois euh, en Wallonie, c'est le secteur de la construction. C'est un secteur qui, qui, pour le moment, a un peu de difficultés mais qui, en principe, euh, est appelé normalement à, à un bel avenir, parce que le bois est un matériau, je veux dire, qui, qui est apte à remplir un, un certain nombre de, de défis, euh, que ce soit technique ou, ou, ou commercial, je veux dire, dans, dans le futur. The environmental aspect is something to consider too. In Europe, the main source of renewable energy is biomass and biomass is partly timber from our forests. Sustainable forest management has a positive effect on biodiversity, mitigating the effects of climate change and reducing the risk of forest fires and insect damage. The European Parliament has made its mark on the EU's forestry policy. Members of the European Parliament have been active in issues like biomass, wood for fuel and a common agricultural policy for forests. These images of forests cover the period from 1900 until today. We can see clearly that the forests are regaining ground. Yet another reason for conducting a smart policy. 
Ich